Hi, Frederick. How's it going? It's going well. How are you doing? Not too bad. We'll see how successful all the Americans are at switching time zones today. <laughs> So I just dropped the link to the meeting minutes in the chat for everybody that's ready. And then we'll get started uh, probably about like five after. So thanks for joining today. Once again, thanks everyone for the, that's joined so far. Um, I dropped a link to the meeting minutes in the chat. If you just wanna add your name there, that'd be great. Okay, once again, for people that are just joining, um, I just dropped the link to the meeting minutes in the chat and we'll get started in about a minute here. So thanks for coming today. Okay, it's five after, I think we can probably get started. Last time meeting minutes are in the chat in case you need a link to them. Um, thanks everybody for joining. This is the weekly CNF working group uh, me meeting. Uh, we meet every 
we get 1600 UTC. Um, so for people in the US, uh, yes, that did just switch. For people in Europe, um, we'll switch in I think like two weeks. So uh, time zones are fun. Before we get started, is there anything that anyone would like to add to the agenda? Uh, we can probably jump right in then. So the first one is the use case template um, that book put together. So uh, this one's been open for a little while now. Um, I don't see Ian on the call, um, but I went through most of the comments before this, all the ones in the file, um, have been resolved. Um, the only one is, uh, oh, sorry, it wasn't Ian's comment. I think this is actually Victor's, yours. Um, that uh, missing what Kubernetes is in the glossary documentation. Yeah, uh, well, basically uh, he refers to Kube, uh, Cube native uh, term. So basically the comment is like, if we can add it in some place, maybe not in this document, but uh, probably in a glossary where we can use it as a reference. Probably. Yeah. I, I, was, I mean, I, I was arguing that off tangent, I have to say, I think, I think Victor's exactly right. If we're gonna use the term and it means something, it'd be a good idea to write down what it means to us. Okay. Yeah, I guess, I think, this has been open for a while. Would you be okay if I created a separate issue for that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, it's not related, but as long as we address that concern, it's, it's fine. Okay. Um, so. Okay, so I'll add that after this meeting. I guess beyond that, I know there's quite a few people on the call here who haven't approved it yet, but they've made comments. I guess is there, does anybody else have any, I guess like comments? Do you think we can merge this, like thoughts? Um, you'll see the comment I've just literally added two minutes ago might not be on your screen yet at the very bottom. I think that one does want addressing. Um, there's two parts to it. Um, one of them I care about, one of them not so much. The one about numbering, don't care one way or the other, just make a choice. Uh, the one about the subdirectory, I think that one does want dealing with. A subdirectory would be a much better idea. Because you tend to want to include images and stuff in these documents. So uh, having a subdirectory means you've always got somewhere to put them. Okay, and you're saying there would be a subdirectory under this use case for like images. You, basically what happens, it, it, what we did for the other one is we made a subdirectory which should have the name that oh. you give the file and then the file would become a readme in that subdirectory. Okay, gotcha. So instead of this being directly under it, it would be in a different folder. It, it would be that slash readme.md basically. That's all it would take. That's the only thing. Yeah. Okay, um, I guess I don't see Vuk on the call. But I, I guess I get what you're saying there too. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe, and then Yeah, actually, the problem was like uh, the the scope of the this PR was increased. I mean, initially it was yeah. just targeting to provide the <laughs> So yeah, so I guess like the template's fine. It's just we want to do the actual like use cases in a di slightly different format. Yeah. 
So probably we can request to split it. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with the template, uh, but now I have to review the, the use case. Like, okay. Maybe we can ask to like split out the, like the templates find and then make the use case as a separate pull request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I guess maybe we have the discussion on that um, on that PR then too. And yeah, I think Ian, I think you make a good point where maybe potentially we want to do one as a as its own separate folder. And then I guess maybe we I'll also create an issue that the BGP use case needs to. Um, numbered at some point too. Yeah, the, the one thing I would say about numbering is, um, again, for now at least we can choose, but um, I can see that what we might run into is if we start getting a flood of use cases, they're all going to take number five if it's the next number going and they'll conflict with each other. So that <laughs> one might be a minor irritation, but again, it's not the end of the world. It's it's like ten minutes of anyone's time to deal with. So either way will work. Yeah, yeah. I think we, I think we can probably cross that bridge when we come to it for right now. It's it's a, it's a potential um, for problems, but okay for now. Um, cool. Uh, anything anyone else wants to add on the use case template? Okay, cool. Next one is the defining the different actors and the roles. Um, this one's been open for a little bit. Um, I guess, does anyone want to raise their hand and volunteer to define the actors and their roles? I know there's a lot of con like content around this. I mean, we can also leave it open for right now, too. I can have a go. Where are we going to put it? Uh, that's up to you. OK, fine. Then we'll make a top level file for it and another one for the glossary that we keep talking about and uh, that. And if we want a glossary, then let's add that as an issue as well. OK. Let me do that now. Are you creating an issue for that? Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. And then I'll just note that down in the meeting minutes too. Um, Okay, great. Thanks, Ian. Um, then I know this one sparked quite a bit of discussion at the last meeting about adding the maximum rep representation for roles. And I know Ian, you write out, wrote up quite um, a long note on this. I guess the question being, do you want to add any of this to the pull request? Are you fine with the pull request as it is? Um, um, if we are concerned about this. I, well, I'm, I'm not terribly bothered if it's a second pull request, to be honest. Um, but it wasn't me who had the concern. It was Shane and Tal particularly worrying about their their IBM compatriots. So their choice. But um, 
I, I think this is big enough and might lead to enough debate that a second pull request would actually make a little more sense now you say it. Okay. Um, Cal, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, it looks good to me, but uh, Shane was uh, the one with uh, uh, more concerns. So I, I see he's not on the call today. So um, if you'd rather wait for him before merging or? Well, if we make this a separate pull request, we won't be merging it with this. We'll be merging it without and saying we haven't quite got there. We'll fix it up. Um, and then there'll be a second pull request and that will make him easier, easier for him or you or anyone else to edit, you know, a couple of words within it, if, um, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm speak for him. Okay. Check the Slack real quick, because didn't he comment on his concerns in there and potentially them being addressed? So yeah, I remember him saying it was okay, but I guess he didn't actually put it on GitHub. Uh, I've read your comment and I think it represents and resolves my concerns completely. Yeah, Jeff had one that I think was more about uh, wording and, you know, a response I'm giving him in Slack is not what's going into the pull request. So what he put in there might be might be worth a little bit of rewording as well. But if we make a separate pull request, he can deal with it then and there and then it will be in the right place. OK, so. I guess the consensus then is to merge this and then there'll be a separate pull request kind of addressing the discussions from last time. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I guess, Ian, the question is, do you want, do you want me to create an issue for that or? Um, yeah, let me do that now. I, I wouldn't normally, but um, if I don't create an issue, I'll forget. So that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, can you just copy paste this into um, like a, an issue? That'd be great. And then, yeah. and then I'll merge this for now. Where did it go? Okay. Um, Great. So thanks for that. Um, and the next thing is around the PR approval process. I know this is like something that is that was brought up a little bit earlier around um, like who should have the ability to like merge a process or like how should we do it? I guess, is there any more like discussions or ideas on this, on what we say is like, when a PR has these approvals, um, then we can say it's ready. I guess the, the can, one of the ideas last time was there's a minimum of three approvals and someone should have a veto power. I guess maybe I can, I'll take it on myself to maybe put together a first PR for this out of the discussion so far, and then maybe that'll kind of spark some further discussion. Yeah, the other thing, if I remember correctly, is like uh, this was depending on the, the roles or like the, the, another PR that we have. Uh, so I think that 
you merge the other one. So maybe that can clarify this discussion as well, I think so. Oh, you're you're talking about what the the roles? Yeah, I think so. So now that we have that one, probably that discussion can continue or, or yeah, but if you carry that the PR it would be even much better. I think are you talking about this one? Yep. Oh, um, yep. So you're saying I should add to this PR, is that correct? Yeah, I guess is you, uh, yeah. Once you create the PR, maybe can, um, you can refer to this one too. Okay, yep. Okay. I guess, is there anything anyone else wanted to add to the discussion while we're all on the call together? Um, if not, people can also uh, add it later too, or message me, or just add it to the discussion. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I know Oliver made this, I think, about like two weeks ago of creating like a high level roadmap of ambition for 2021. Um, I was wondering if people had a time to look at this, had like any thoughts about this. I mean, we could also say this is something for the co-chairs to figure out too once they're elected. No thoughts, discussions, ideas? Um, I guess we, we can also wait for the co-chairs to provide uh, more insight once they're elected too. Um, before we get into the elections, um, I saw there was also a, a Ian, you had a deployment use case, I guess, did you, want to add anything about that? Yes, I'm a terrible person. I wrote this weeks ago, um, ran it around a couple of people who variously objected to it. Um, so I need to kind of back off on the opinion in it, which is completely fine. It should be unopinionated. That's the whole point. Um, but the idea here is, um, and I would add there's a couple of other basic ones here. Um, I should know how to deploy a CNF, right? I start with a network that has nothing running on it and I want one CNF to run in the network, possibly in a variety of places. I wanna know how I get from A to B basically. Um, and um, I would add the next one that follows that is probably a debugging use case, which is I have CNFs running on my network and the network isn't working the way I expect it to. How do I find the component at fault? And the reason I think these two are important is the first one deals with elements of orchestration that no one's really defined terribly well in this. Like, you know, how do I get the software installed? How do I actually start a CNF? Because there's no such thing as a Kubernetes application in that regard. The second one deals with responsibility boundaries. So how do I know which CNF is broken or if the platform is broken? Um, and that one, I think, is the one that we were talking about weeks ago that would say, well, privilege is important. Lack of privilege is important because with privilege in place, if you're allowed to have privileged containers, you can break the platform and nobody can tell who's at fault. Okay. Um, so I, I think once we've got those two written down, then we can start getting quite creative with the use cases at that point, with the, sorry, with the best practices at that point, because we'll have something to hang them off of. 
and you know we aren't doing much in the way of writing best practices at this point so that would actually get us moving okay cool yeah so it sounds like Ian you have like quite some thoughts and probably even a document behind this so if other people are interested it sounds like Ian's the person to talk to um, about yeah um, if you have your own thought about what that deployment use case looks like or what that debugging use case looks like I would greatly welcome your input to be perfectly honest even if it's only basically a chat in slack for now that's fine um, because you know I, I don't want this to be entirely my opinion and nothing else I want this to be well we're all going to have to sign up to it at some point um, and there's no point in doing that you know in a long rambling argument in the in the pull request so sooner you get the your thoughts across the better the result will be okay cool yeah so if people have thoughts or experience on deploying stuff uh please message ian cool um is there anything anyone else wants to add to that or ideas to throw out right now okay and that just brings us to the last point um, on the agenda is the elections. Um, so currently for the co-chairs for the service provider chair, um, we have self nominations from Jeffrey and uh, Vuk. For, for the CNF developer chair, uh, we have Ian, Victor and Gerge. Uh, for the Kubernetes community chair, we currently have no nominations. Um, the nomination period is also open um, until uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so if you're considering run, running for the Kubernetes community chair, uh, please feel free to throw your um, uh, name in the ring. Um, the only other thing is um, with Shane, um, he nominated himself, but he didn't say which chair. So I don't know, Tal, have you spoken uh, with Shane? Um, yeah, I uh, <laughs> can you remind me what kind of chairs we have? It should be obvious. Yeah, so it's the uh, service provider, the CNF developer, and the Kubernetes community chair. So we are we can only be, I think, a, a community chair. Okay. Um, <laughs> On one point there, I, I wonder if we can just save ourselves a little bit of trouble because I realized that I made a mistake in my nomination. And I think it's fair to say the others did as well. Where everybody who's stood for a chair, can we just basically make a blanket assumption they're also standing for a tech lead? Yeah, I, most people not nominated for both, and the nomination period is open till next week. I guess, is there is there something specific you wanted to address, Ian? Well, I need to know if I send, need to send another email, but I mean, I, I think to be quite wow. honest, anyone who's stuck their name in for chair is probably well qualified to be a tech lead as well. That was really the thought. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're, um, I think you're, you're right that the nominations can carry over. Um, so I'll follow up with Shane and, um, and Slack and ask him to clarify in the mailing list um, which position which position he's going to, trying to run for. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is there anyone on the call that hasn't added their company to the interested parties um, that would like to vote in the election. Uh, if you're interested in voting, please feel free to add yourself to an interested party here and we'll happily merge that too. So how does that work if um, the company I'm not is not really interested in this particular space, but I, I personally am interested in possible votes? Uh, 
Um, I guess, would you feel comfortable adding your name? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, I mean, I think that is fine too if you don't want to put down your company's name, but since we do have organizational voting, obviously we can't just have everybody putting down their name, but um, say for instance, like I'm just picking an example, like Tal and Shane can both put down their name because their employer is Red Hat. And so that's what it goes back to. So I guess technically you would be listing yourself as the interested party, but you'd be representing your company or you'd be voting through your company. Yeah, that, that's the problem is that the company I'm at is a healthcare company and they're really not interested in this kind of stuff and they won't want to be represented in this kind of a thing. So that, okay. that's where that conflict comes from. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like quite fine unless anybody else has any disagreement about that. Um, if we go kind of barrack room lawyering, then basically that seems to make Frederick an individual contributor and should his company um, you know, show any more interest in the area in the future, then we can, the rules that I'm supposed to be writing regarding company representation would start to kick in. Somebody could say, but Frederick stands for his company, he isn't individual anymore. Yeah, I'm yeah, fine with that as well. Um, that makes sense to me. And I'll, I'll also add that I, uh, I'm, I'm surprised we don't have uh, academics involved too. Uh, I know a lot of universities do research on these things and graduate students are writing dissertations. Um, uh, we, we obviously want to allow participation from th that part of the community as well. So if we ever do get somebody, I think they, they would also count as an individual contributor rather than say representing a university, which just doesn't make sense really. Is there any reason not to list individual contributors in the interested parties? I mean. Well, I need to drop for another call, but uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for listening to me on this. Yeah, thanks, Frederick. I mean, I would add, I would add arm in the list as well. Okay. Um, it, that was Philip, right? If, if, unless anybody has major objections, I can also just add this on the call right now. Just wanted to say hello. Uh, I joined in the meantime. Vuk is here. Hey, Vuk, how's it going? A bit busy. Uh, uh, Philip, what, what's. Um, yeah, it's Philip Robin. Philip. Is it two L's? It's one L double P. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And I'll merge that too. Does anyone else on the call want to be added? Also feel free to add a pull request too. And um, yeah. Thanks for people that are adding the notes in the background for me too. Anonymous Camel, that's great. Bill, what's the um, timeline? Yeah. What's the deadline for adding to interested parties? Um, right, I, I think we can be kind of friendly about this. I would say probably like today, like today-ish, like if, unless you don't think you can make that deadline, like, I, I think we're trying to encourage participation, not block people out. Um, so mm -hmm. we're happy to add more people. Like if you, if you need more time, I think that's fine too. But um, yeah, I guess, do you know when you'll be able to add um, VMware? Well, 
I'm uh, not sure. I need to uh, get some uh, confirmation. So uh, that's why I was asking because, you know, today is a good deadline to put in an email and say, hey, we need to close this today. So thanks. Yeah. So if you can do that, that'd be great. Um, if not, I don't think people are going to be like, absolutely, we can't do this because you missed a deadline. Um, we're trying to encourage participation by everyone. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Should we come up with some type of like quarterly, biannually, something like timeline twos, like as KubeCons roll through this and that? Um, obviously, we don't want like just kind of constant tsunamis, but you know, the example just given, like I know in the past, um, typically like if you have a anal legal department like I do, they want to go and review, you know, repos, things like that. So, um, you know, it's not always just like a, I unilaterally make a decision to be a quote unquote contributor. Um, do we want to set some type of, um, you know, thing for like, you know, maybe like after every KubeCon or something, we do like an update to the contributors list um, or interested parties list gives people um, a chance, you know, they go to KubeCon, they go back, talk to their bosses, et cetera. And we kind of make some type of formal thing. So like we're encouraging participation, but we also kind of give people like things that they can point their employers at, like say like, Hey, you know, the next round to like become an interested party, start voting is this need, time, stuff like that. Do we need specific uh, timelines and deadlines for that? I would go more for a, like a more agile approach. Like if somebody's interested, then they can just put themselves. I'm okay with that. As long as people aren't worried that like, you know, some wedge issue shows up and then like a bunch of people suddenly add themselves. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm personally fine adding whenever, as long as, you know, people don't mind managing the list. I would go with this like organic way. Um, I'm just from personal experience saying that if there's something on the repo that says, you know, next round of whatever is at yeah. such and such time, it's easy to send that to a legal department and say, please don't procrastinate on this. That's all. Like, it, it's not about like creating artificial barriers to people. It's just, if you've dealt with like some of the kookier legal, you've maybe looked for some of these types of verbiages to pop up so that you can kind of pressure them a little is all. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess the question then is like, how do we balance the two of not discouraging people from um, participating, but also like encouraging that, I guess. Maybe, uh, Jeffrey, would you be interested in taking like a first stab at that language just because I'm not super familiar with what legal would need because um, I haven't worked at a large company. Um, and then I think we can have a discussion um, about if we think that fits the needs of the community. I had to go here, just sure. a quick question for this one. Um, could that work if we use like the election date, the next one? Because I assume that's what we need the uh, interested parties for as kind of the, uh, the date for legal that I want to participate in this. And for that, I need to be, or I need the company to be listed here. And that's your deadline. Could that be a solution without creating extra deadlines and rounds on this? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think that's that's a, that's a bit less confusing than than having KubeCon as a deadline. And do we think that uh, like adding a company name is the problem for legal or contributing anything to a repo is a problem for legal? I think it's more just motivating legal departments that aren't like super <laughs> yeah, motivated to, to like go in and look I'm to things. I'm trying to understand your motivation to involve legal in this because like adding the company name is more like a trademark issue than legal. Um, yeah, so I think that was a, a really good suggestion. What if we say uh, we can add companies at any time, but the deadline to be in each election is 
like two weeks before the voting starts or something like that. Yes, and that, I, yeah, I, I, think I was thinking the same thing, Bill. Yeah, like when Ildiko made that suggestion, is just like you can add people anytime. But like I said, um, to to Gergay's exact question, like I will submit something and like I mean I had to go through an approval process at the very beginning of this to like have Charter's name at the bottom, like you know, like do we put our name on something? Yada yada. Like let us review. Um, it's just a thing, and I mean. I'm not saying that it won't always happen. It just sometimes it takes way longer than I would like it to. Um, like our VMware friend, you know, it's like I, I'm going to try. Like it's it's helpful to have the by the end of the day email, right? Um, so like, like you said, I, I really like the more participation, the better. Whenever we bring people in, the better. I just know that sometimes if I can point to a link and say, look, elections are coming up at this time. Can you please, you know, get off your hindquarters and make this happen for me? It sometimes is advantageous yeah. for me. I second that. I also think that it's not entirely clear. What, what does that mean if you're an interested party? Uh, if you put your name out there, what is the commitment? And uh, that's for sure the first question Ligo is going to ask. Well, what are you committing to do if you put your name there? So I don't know if we want to complicate it that much. Yeah, I mean, same here from the arm side. I've not run that path. Our legal, yes. Yeah, so in principle, uh, we are interested, but the, the legal implications of that, it's, uh, I would need more, more details, right? I think if, if we can clarify, Bill, what does that mean? Um, if, you're, if you're putting your name uh, on the list, and it would probably go a long way for those of us who has, a, how should I say this, a legal department that uh, likes to uh, weigh in on things. Okay, yeah, I think that definitely is not especially clear right now. Um, because if it's an initiative with some bios and kind of membership agreements, it's much clearer and, and different. In this case, it's not quite that yet. Yeah, yeah but let's make sure we, it doesn't backfire because as someone who works on a relatively rigid corporate, we managed to get our name there quite easily because there were no definition of commitments and so on and so forth. If there are, I think our legal might weigh in. So we need to balance this. Yeah, that's a good point. So Ronnie, you're basically saying, since it's not specified, we can all <laughs> throw our name in there and legal will be fine. That's it. I like that. It's a pragmatic approach. No, I mean- That's kind of the approach we, I took, full honesty. And really all I told legal was that, um, you know, our company name was like, we're going to say that like, you know, we should be following best practices, right? I mean, we're not writing standards or anything here, but like the thought would be is that if our name is on that list at the bottom and something's the best you know, practice that, you know, Charter agrees with that. And that might change later once legal looks at this harder, I don't know. Um, but that's kind of the pitch I said was like, hey, we're, we're putting out general guidance and trying to get some type of conformity around RFPs and like vendor engagements, et cetera. I think uh, legal would legal would always be concerned about whatever the liabilities are, and I think it could be clarified that there is no liability uh, involved here. Um, or maybe yeah. it's not so clear. You know what what happens if we do put some best practices and somebody is hurt <laughs> and decides to sue CNCF for whatever reason? I'm I'm, I'm being uh, very wild here with my uh, imagination. I know. Um, so I think the legal liability is, is under the license. Um, so it's Apache 2.0. So I think, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but it's basically, it's up to you or what you do with it is, is your responsibility <laughs> in terms of what the interested party means. I think this is like a bigger discussion. So I'd like to like create an issue about this and like move the discussion there because I think there's been some great points on this call and I, I guess we don't really have the answers yet, right? This is like, I mean, this is the first time we're kind of doing this in this group. Um, and so maybe the kind of like the loose definition has worked so far. Um, 
and it'll work kind of like through this initial phase, but as we kind of build out and get a little bit more structure, we can, yeah, I guess maybe define that a bit more too. I guess yeah. too, like legal departments aside too, if we have people who, you know, never attend a single call, never read a single pull request, this and that, um, do we just let anybody vote? Like, I don't know if there's like a bar. Um, I'm not saying that there needs to be, but like the whole interested parties thing is really like literally just at its base definition. I'm, I'm just saying that I'm interested in this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted, at least at the beginning, to keep it very loose to encourage participation and discussion from anybody who wanted to be a part of it. I think as this becomes larger, you know, right, like governance scales as the organization or like as the community scales. Um, I, I think we've seen this in a lot of di different organizations or different projects across the CNCF. And so I, I, I would actually leave this up to kind of the co-chairs that get elected to define if they want to change the governance process, um, like what, like what's a better way to do it? So I don't think we're going to solve it today. I'd say, and yeah, should we create a bar? Like potentially, um, but yeah. Well, if, if somebody creates a pull request to add themselves as an interested party, um, that pull request isn't automatically merged. So yeah. I guess it's uh, it's up to the co-chairs, right? Yeah, but we're not the first one to do a project in this uh, in this organization, right? So why don't we get uh, Bill? Why don't we figure out for CNCF who um, what are the bylaws or what's the guidelines and just add this and that would, uh, it's like the millionth project, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff. Um, in SIG contributor experience uh, mm -hmm. under CNCF. And that's actually where we pulled like the organizational voting from. And so there's a lot of great information there. So it's a potential source to look at if people aren't familiar, their contributor strategy, sorry. Um, and they, you're right, they do have a lot of stuff on governance. And- So let's just say this follows the CNCF governance, blah, 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 uh, contribution strategy, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just ref we refer to what everything else is being, being done, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the funny thing about CNCF, though, is we require open governance, but we don't say how you have to do it. So every project can do it differently. So we mm. just have to choose one of them. I'm not saying we can't point to one. That's, I mean, we just pointed to Fluent D for doing the voting. Um, and so I just copy, it's just like, which one do we want to do, right? Got it. Because CNCF is all about choices. Got it. Yeah, um, so I think this is a super good discussion. Um, and I think it's definitely something that we should track for the future. Um, I don't think it's gonna affect this current election unless people see any really big issues. Um, yeah, but I, I think it is important to discuss as we kind of get more and more formalized, right? This is the process of building out the actual structure of what we're doing at the same time. Okay, um, are there any additional questions, comments, concerns, issues, pull requests? Actually, one thing, uh, Vok, are you still on the call? I've been here. <clears throat> yeah, I guess you were on the call. I just saw, saw the comment that you want uh... You discussed before to split uh, the use case, example use case out of uh, the template. Yeah, exactly. So if you can split the example use case could, um, out, we can merge the template. And then I think people want a little bit of time to look at the use case specifically. Okay. And Ian had something here where 
it might be helpful to have a structure where you have a subdirectory and the readme file is the actual use case because then you can add images and other things like that. Okay, I thought uh, adding an example according to the template uh, would be also helpful for understanding template. And uh, it's a real uh, use case example, at least I um, try to, to find out the one that is not that long, but that's still descriptive and illustrative. Um, so I might either put it in a readme or, or simply just for a time being uh, leave it out uh, of this uh, merge request uh, and then create another merge request separately so that we can discuss that uh, use case. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone's got any debate that you're making sensible choices in applying the template, but yeah, you don't want your template to get hung up just because your use case you know, wants discussion. So I would, I think it makes sense to separate the two for all that, um, you know, logically what you're trying to do is demonstrate the use of the template. Yeah, so I think everybody's agreed the template's great and we can merge it and then we can discuss your use case separate and then, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Awesome, thanks. Cool. Um, anything else? Otherwise, I think uh, everybody can have back nine minutes. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for coming today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks, bye. Thanks, bye.